One of the posters I find most intriguing in this auction is lot number 111 by Frederick Herrick, and it's London's underground, the nightly carnival. And the reason I find it intriguing is, in many ways, it's the most unposterly poster in the entire sale. It's very much a confluence of fine art and graphic art. It represents London's underground system as a series of stars in the constellations in the sky. It almost looks like a frieze, in effect, with little cherubs appearing above the constellations looking down. And if you look at each one of the little orbs, some of them are actually named with the names of the underground stops, and the other ones have numbers. And those numbers, if you look at the side of the poster, very elegantly arrayed in exquisite typography, those numbers correlate to different venues, different theaters that travelers can get to via London Underground. This image is elegant, uh, it's precise, it's painterly, it's stylish, it's sophisticated. Frederick Herrick designed a lot of posters for the London Underground and for the various British train companies, but he was also the only British artist to exhibit at the famed 1925 exposition in Paris, the Exposition Internationale des Arts Décoratifs, the show from which Art Déco took its name. His images are always very stylized, they effuse Art Déco sensibilities, and here, if you see the image and you combine it with the text, it really is, in many ways, a supremely elegant Art Deco masterpiece. And not only is it elegant, it's such an excellent idea to equate the stops on the subway system with planets in the sky or with heavenly bodies. It really, it's a very lofty and elevated idea that he really took to a masterful conclusion. Often I'm asked, which are your favorite pieces in the sale? And I thought I'd get a little jump on that by actually telling you what some of my favorites are. And I've chosen my favorites based on images that I like, based on pieces that were particularly rare or that had a particularly good story. And the first one of these is Lot 54 by the famous Danish poster artist Thor Vogelund. This poster is for a one-night event in 1945 called Paris and Copenhagen. The image is this joyful, effusive, uh, joie de vivre kind of image that incorporates many of the great icons of Paris. The Eiffel Tower, a waiter serving drinks, a dancing girl, um, and the names of some of the various venues around Paris. La Rotonde, uh, Folie Bergère, the Moulin Rouge, uh, the Casino de Paris. It was very difficult for me to figure out exactly what this event was. To the best of my research, it seems that in Copenhagen, after the Second World War ended, they had an evening celebrating Paris that had recently been liberated from under the Germans, and this was a most likely a fundraiser to raise money for some element of Parisian life. It's a joyous, happy, fun image. Uh, really nice because it was only a one-night event, so I have to imagine not many of these posters were printed. But it really, it sort of, even though it's from 1945, it really sort of encapsulates the feeling of Paris at the height of the Jazz Age. It's a wonderful mix of typography and image, and look how cleverly he worked in the French flag, which you see the blue, white, and red in the lower left-hand corner of the piece. It's a wonderful pastiche collage of various imagery incorporating typography. It really is just, it's full of energy. It's one of the reasons why I like it so much. I find it curious that just because I think a poster is one of the most interesting in the sale, that doesn't mean it's going to do well. It just means that I like it. And the next image, lot 117, may just prove this point. I really consider this to be one of the finest uh, graphic designs that I've ever come across. And I, I can't explain that other than that it personally resonates with me in a very profound way. Uh, it's an image by the great American artist E. McKnight Kelfer, who became famous in Britain. Although born in America, he's considered a British artist, but in fact, he was American born. Uh, he did most of his great and most memorable work in England, and his style really shifted among, among different artistic genres. He was a vorticist, he was a cubist, he was an abstractionist, all these different things. And this poster for the Great Western Railway encompasses so many different styles and it encompasses such a great incorporation of the typography into the image. It's a little strange, but I actually had a dream about this poster the other night where in this dream, I was in McKnight Calfer's home and I looked out the window and what I saw were these rolling hills with the crisscrossing paths. And I thought to myself, that's where he got the idea from. This image to me really just is one of the finest designs, both British or American that I've ever come across. 
And it doesn't exist in a vacuum because it was uh, one of a series of four that Calford did for the Great Western. Uh, the other one that we have in this auction is lot 118, also from 1933. This is Go Great Western to Cornwall. And clearly you can see many of the same graphic design elements at play here, certainly the incorporation of the typography. But if you look at the great sweep of the bay and you look at the setting sun, what you can't see through any image and what you can only see in person is that the twilight colors of this image practically glow. It's literally illuminated from within. The poster has such an incredible and mysterious light to it. It's absolutely wonderful. And the way the light reflects off the hills and off the clouds, it's an absolutely extraordinary image. The fact that I find a piece to be particularly interesting is no guarantee that it's going to be amongst the auction's top sellers. But these two images particularly are such aesthetic stars of the sale. Uh, they, in my mind, they, they stand out and they really belong in any serious museum collection. We're very privileged in this auction to have three posters by a very little known yet seriously overlooked American artist named Oscar Rabe Hansen. One of the reasons I think his work is so overlooked is that he died very young. But between 1923 and his death in 1926 or 1927, uh, he created 29 posters. Lot 126 is just one of these images, and maybe it resonates so much with me because as an American boy, I'm sort of enraptured with the whole mythology and imagery of the Wild West. But here you have a Native American warrior astride his horse, lance in hand, with the sun setting behind him on top of a grassy hill. It's almost like a visual poem. It encapsulates all of the wonderful imagery of the Wild West, and this was to get people to ride on the trains. If you look at the texture of the sky behind the warrior, if you look at the detail of the grass waving at the feet of his horse, even the horse's tail blowing in the wind, it is such an incredible image and one that is extraordinarily rare. In fact, I liked it so much, I put it on the cover of the catalog, and we're lucky enough to have two other posters by Oscar Ray Panson in the sale, lot 127 and lot 128. These, for the same railway, take a completely different approach to advertising. One called Over Trails of the Covered Wagons implies that this train is taking the same routes that covered wagons used to take, which may or may not be a good selling point. But to emphasize that, Hansen depicts this wonderfully autumnal scene of a covered wagon being pulled by oxen over golden grass past purple hills, really incredible. And then in lot 128, also for the North Shore Line, he takes the artistic gambit of illustrating to Milwaukee in ye olden days. The idea being, look, if you had ever wanted to travel from Chicago to Milwaukee in the previous century, you had to take a covered wagon. And I guess he's implying as if that wouldn't be awkward enough, he depicts the scene in the rain. So it really wasn't a great way to travel by bouncy horse and buggy uh, through the rain. The implication now that the North Shore line is gonna be much more modern, much smoother and much easier. This piece in particular, Lot 128, if you look at the pattern that the rain makes, if you look at the street lamps glowing in the background like orbs out of a gray night sky, and even the patterns that the two pedestrians are making in the puddles in the street, it is a definite melange of different patterns, different textures, different feelings, the woman's dress, the man's bag. It's an incredible tour de force of lithography. If you've liked the little tour I've given you so far, it really is just the tip of the iceberg. I encourage you to take a look on our website. The entire catalog is available there. Or better yet, come down to Swan, view the pieces in living color, and take a look for yourself. I trust you will agree that these posters are not only rare, not only important, but also really beautiful and exciting to look at. <laughs>